Jackie Keith Whitley was raised in Sandy Hook in the hills of eastern Kentucky. He began singing at age three and won a local talent contest at age four. Young Keith was drawn to his mother's country record collection, especially records by Lefty Frizzell and Hank Williams. By age eight, he was performing on the Buddy Starcher TV show out of Charleston, West Virginia. We have a wee little gift here we want to bring in. Keith Whitley, is that right? Yeah. The news is out. As a teen, he joined brother Dwight's rock band. But when Dwight turned his interest to bluegrass, Keith did too. They formed a band influenced by the songs of Bill Monroe and the Stanley Brothers. While singing at a talent contest in Ezell, Kentucky, 14-year-old Keith met Ricky Skaggs. The two became friends and started hanging out and playing music together. When the boy's hero, Ralph Stanley, came to play at a nearby club, Keith and Ricky were in the audience. In 1970, uh, I was playing a place in uh, just across the river from Louisa, Kentucky, in West Virginia there. And I was late. I had a flat and was late and getting to the show, probably 45 minutes. And when I got there, I heard some music inside the building. And I opened the door. You know, at first I thought it was Stanley Brothers Records playing. And I opened the door and looked in. There's two young gentlemen standing on the stage with a, with a mandolin and a guitar singing the old Stanley Brothers song. Well, I didn't know what to think, because it sounded so much like the Stanley Brothers did. So I just sat down and watched them do two or three. Stanley eventually asked the two teens to join him on the road as members of the Clinch Mountain Boys. Skagg stayed with Ralph Stanley until 1974, when he left to form his own bluegrass band, while Whitley continued to work with Stanley off and on until 1978, when he joined J.D. Crow and the New South. With Crow, Whitley was able to mix progressive bluegrass with the traditional country sounds he'd grown up on. Whitley moved to Nashville in 1982 and worked as a sought-after singer recording demos of songs that would become big hits for other artists. In 1984, he signed with Tree Publishing, that same year, he signed with RCA and released the mini album, A Hard Act to Follow. The traditionally flavored album didn't yield any hits and was called Too Country by some critics. Searching for his sound, Keith Whitley released the album L.A. to Miami in 1985, filled with hits including 10 Feet Away, Homecoming 63, and Miami, Miami. Miami, Miami. He began dating country singer Lori Morgan, whom he'd briefly met while singing demos a couple of years earlier. They married in November 1986 and welcomed a son, Jesse Keith Whitley, in June of 1987. Keith, you just uh, about to release a new album. Got a brand new single coming out in about a week and a brand new album coming out about four weeks after that. Called mm -hmm. Don't Close Your Eyes. That's the title of both the single and the album, and I'm real excited about this. This is the first time I've uh, got the chance to produce myself. I co-produced this mm -hmm. along with Garth Fundus. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the feedback we've had on it so far, I think it's the best stuff that we've ever done. Don't close your eyes. Don't close your eyes was filled with traditional country songs, including the title cut, which became a number one hit, and Billboard's number one for the entire year. The next two singles from the album also became number one hits, When You Say Nothing At All, and I'm No Stranger To The Rain. I'm no stranger to the rain. In 1989, Keith began work on his next album with Garth Fundus. With several hit singles to his credit and a promising career ahead, the world was shocked when Keith Whitley was found dead on May 9th, 1989. As the country music community mourned his loss, RCA released the album and single titled, I Wonder Do You Think of Me. The collection included the hits, It Ain't Nothing" and I'm Over You. In the fall of 1989, I'm No Stranger to the Rain was named Single of the Year at the 23rd Annual CMA Awards. So I never go 
around mirrors. Fans continue to remember Keith Whitley in their own special ways. Many artists cite him as a major influence, and though his career was far too short, Whitley's lasting impact can be felt and heard today, and now he'll be forever remembered as a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame.